Hi, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm very well, Sarah. How are you? Yeah, very good. It's very uh, cold, windy and blustery over here. So, Where are you? In London. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, it's it, it, I'm in Atlanta and it, up until today it had been sunny and, and lovely, but it's a great, grey skies today. So oh, I share no. your pain a little bit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we have that kind of um, whether it's sunny and then you step out and then you get like hit by wind. So by wind, deceptive. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Deceptive Yeah. weather. laughs> um, congratulations. I, I've only just heard of the show recently and blazed mm. through the entire two series available because I loved it so much and I can't wait oh. to explore what's happening in season three and where we ended with Xander is quite a happy note so I was just wondering mm. if we could go into what where we see him 10 months on from the end of season two yeah it's it's a uh, um same as you were as it were with him he's very happy he's in the still the honeymoon stage of 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 the relationship with Tyler I mean, those initial teething problems that start to happen after an, a marriage uh, starting, I, problems is not the right word, but the questions, do we have a family? Do we have kids? You know, where are we going with this? And not to mention that, don't forget that Xander that you met in season one is, would never have done what Xander in season two did. So there is that dynamic of, of uh, work and life coming together in a way that, you know, he's having to navigate also. Um, so yeah, but I would say overall, the way you find him at the start is in, in, a, in a blissful ignorance, I would say, you know. Absolutely. And his like job must like, I mean, you know, he, he did it so like he eloped and it was quite different to what he usually mm. would. But how does being a divorce lawyer and in charge of like a whole divorce empire affect his like day to day married life? Well, you would think he, he wouldn't find himself in this situation knowing what he does <laughs> as a divorce lawyer. But I think that's what's great about um, Abby's writing in this show is, is this, it's not tidy. And I think that's what draws people to it is that when you think you know, you know, she actually does this thing and turns a sharp corner. And it isn't just for dramatic effect, it's because that's how we behave as people, you know? If we were so predictable, we really wouldn't have divorce lawyers because you'd be able to know, oh, this isn't right for me. I'm not going to do it. But that's not often how we behave, you know. Take it from someone who had a lot of really weird relationships in drama school. We make, <laughs> <laughs> we, we sometimes do push the red button and, and uh, play with fire because, you know, you never know what happens, you know. But I, I, I yes, I, it's completely out of character for Xander to do what he did. And I remember reading that in the beginning of season two and going, Abby, um, what? And but of course it makes sense because her her strength is in, is in the little moments. You know, she had built enough of a hole, a sense of loneliness. And I hope I portrayed with Xander, despite his confidence and success, there was something that needs to be needed to be filled. And I think that. Um, you know, he, he he chose Tyler to be the thing to fill that. And, you know, we'll find out how good or bad an idea that was in season three. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah, I completely agree with you because I was talking to a friend about the beauty of the writing is that mm. these characters are inherently messy because they're inherently human. So um, yeah. they don't follow that kind of script protocol that they have one set emotions. I think Xander's a perfect example of that. Yeah, and he's he's you know it's, it's that is you know ended up being such a great gift because when I read the script, I never auditioned for Zander. It was you know they off Jessica and um, Abby, Jessica who Hobbs who directed the first season, and Abby Morgan offered Zander to me. But when when I read the first ever episode before they offered it to me, Zander was written as a sixty-something-year-old Scandinavian. <laughs> I don't think they. I don't think they had any real plans or what they didn't really know where Xander was going, but they wanted me in the show. So they said, okay, we'll give you Xander and we'll work on it. And Abby, that's how she sort of writes. She had one of the few writers that has that luxury of the BBC saying, we'll, we'll trust you to develop this thing as you go along, you know? And she, she, you know, she latched onto me as an actor, me as the performer and together with Jessica, they started building this Xander story, but that kept building. So when I came back for season two, this whole thing of Tyler, I was like, wow. And then when they told me about, then it was in season two that Abby finally told me where she felt the arc might go in season three. So I love where Xander ended up. I love the complexity of him. I love the ambiguity of him. 
and the messiness of all these characters, but he embodies it big time because like I said, he is full of contradictions, you know, um, but at the same time, still very much Xander, you know, I don't know yeah. how she pulled it off, but I was <laughs> able to be true to Xander, but at the same time play these ridiculous situations, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And he's just, I think he's a fascinating character anyway, without the, because he's, he's a queer black divorce attorney who owns this successful thing. attorney yeah successful yeah. attorney in in the midst of yeah. London and there's just yeah. so much of him to explore and I think it's fantastic that you know we don't see that much on tv you know successful person of color middle that middle class whatever and in season three we see a lot of that with you see more into his personal life actually and we we say we we sort of say, hey, you know what? These people exist. <laughs> you know, what I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's about time you recognize. It's not just you know. So I I think it's very rich to. Have, I mean, I felt I feel very lucky to have represented that, um, and to have been the one to have represented that in the show as as well loved as this one. You know, absolutely. And how was it uh, building the relationship with Damien? Because Tyler has his own kind of set of secrets that he's been yeah. keeping obey yeah. but also you, you've got some great chemistry together on screen yeah. as well I was told uh, I remember I was uh, a couple of years back I did a fellow here in New York in the park and, and the casting director said do you want to come in and 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 read with we're, we're trying to cast the Desdemonas and uh, Amelia I said yeah yeah you mean a chemistry read and I remember her saying Heidi Griffiths, she's the casting director here at The Public. And she said to me, no, no, it's not for chemistry because good actors should have chemistry. And I remember thinking that I was like, yeah, actually that's, that's absolutely true. Chemistry read is a complete misnomer. It's, it's about maybe making the person feel comfortable in the room, but a good actor, you should be able to at least create a sense of chemistry, I believe, two good actors together. Mm -hmm. So I, Damien is a fabulous actor. So it was, it was easy. I, didn't, I never thought once in terms of, how do we get our chemistry going? We just sort of started playing the scene and being available for each other. And that is the definition on screen of, of chemistry is being available for each other, which is what you should do any time. So it was easy. It was really easy. And he's a lovely guy and his energy is very different from mine. So that's another interesting, wonderful dynamic. And um, no, it was, I, I, I'd like to give you some secrets to how we did it and how we found it yeah, right. the guy was available and we got on with it it was great you know <laughs> amazing amazing I read this mm -hmm. really wonderful quote from you that you play mm. your roles like you're playing music um mm. and uh this is kind of like the end of the symphony for uh Xander so how does it feel yeah. ending that kind of chapter of music with this character and saying goodbye to the show yeah, with music, I, I feel with music, you know, you learn the notes, which is the work, you know, the pieces I've been playing for over 20 years that I, I learned the notes when I, I don't know, in, in, in came from school in Surrey, you know, but I'm still playing them because it's not about learning the notes, it's about the interpretation yeah. each time you play it, literally each time you play, you, you interpret it in a different way, what's going on with your life, what's going on in the moment, what's the other person giving you and it affects it. And I think that's it. I know I knew Xander by the end of season one, you know, I certainly knew him in season two and I knew him in season three. So that's not my worry. I've learned him, but it's about living in him, you know, and um, this third season required us to really be torn apart as characters and put together as best as we could. And the only way you can put yourself together is, is knowing yourself well enough to try and heal, you know, so yeah, it, it, it is. I'm glad you brought that up because that's what it felt like. It's like, oh, well, I know this guy. I know how he'll react here. But how is he reacting now after all this time? You know, that's the specifics of it. What is it to play this piece now as opposed to playing it in 2018, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. That's such a beautiful answer. And I feel really bad that I'm going to launch into the worst segue of all time, which is... <laughs> At the end of season two, we saw you in a cape and mask. <laughs> and now you're a part of Peacemaker and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. <laughs> so yeah, if you yeah. could touch upon those, because I mean, Peacemaker has been very popular and very successful. Yeah. And obviously everyone's looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So I was wondering if you mm. could just touch upon those roles. You know, I'm so, so hilarious you said that. I, what a connection. I just never thought, I can say <laughs> to you that when I said to him, 
you know, you know, that great scene we had in season two where we make up again and he goes, you said you like superheroes. I said, yes, I thought, you know, not, you know, I, I like the movies. Do you know what I mean? I never thought, <laughs> I really definitely, nothing crossed my mind at that time that I'd end up being in, in, in a couple of them. So I, it's, it's, the, it's, it's, it's the funny thing about this industry, you know, and I, I said it before, you know, um, The Split was my first ever series regular, ever. And that was just five years ago. And then now we're talking about, you know, Peacemaker and Guardians and stuff. It's just the crazy nature of this business. And I'm, I'm having a ball. I'm having a great time. And if you're a fan of the Guardians movies, you're going to absolutely love this third one. It really is the third act. We've said it. It really is the third act. And the, the, what, the gift of the role James has given me in it is, is it's funny because it draws upon those 20 years of theater and Shakespeare, and whatever, in a weird way. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm having the time of my life, you know, and I think you're going to enjoy it if, you, if you're if you a fan of those. Oh, movies, I'm a huge you know? fan. So, oh, great. And, <laughs> and, like, is it a villainous role? I'm a big villain fan. So, <laughs> I can't say because right now <laughs> everything is being kept under wraps. Okay. I mean, <laughs> it's, it was a big thing when James confirmed them in it. Then it was a big thing when he confirmed that it's a, one of the main roles but you know we can't really give you too much detail can we say that's fair that is fair. let me that just put fair. it this way that he's I, I he's he, I, I don't I don't think there's been quite a character quite like him yet in um in the universe so it's great to be it's a bit like what you talked about with Xander you know having this black queer you know successful whatever I, I think there's aspects of this character and the fact that it's me playing him that I think I, I'm happy to celebrate that I've been given the opportunity to play a character like that, you know. Absolutely. And I can't wait to see yeah. uh, what you do next. <laughs> You're truly fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. Such a pleasure, Terry. Take care of yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.